Hey gorgeous! Okay, give me a second. Someone's doing some mowing and it's not too hot today, so I'm gonna close the windows. Also, I know this bed's squeaky. Don't get me started on this bed. It was it's a it's it's a whole other thing. I'm hoping to get a new bed when my to buy list isn't as long, but yeah, it's don't mind the the squeaks not not my <laughs> not my choice okay so hopefully you can't hear the mowing anymore hey gorgeous welcome back and welcome to my strip a wardrobe video i don't know what else to call it obviously the title and the sum the thumbnail is gonna say something a lot more illuminating than what i'm coming up with now but my strip a wardrobe video at the moment it's in between christmas and new year's and my club is not opening just because of the time period so i've obviously had a lot of time off and i've been doing two main things with this time and that is one decluttering my work wardrobe and number two is I've been spending a lot of time like learning new things. I absolutely love learning and that's why I'm so excited to announce that I have teamed up with Beducated today which is pretty much the Netflix of sexual wellness. An online course platform with really easy to follow video audio and written guides which provides techniques and information to help level up your relationships and the relationship that you have with yourself. I found so many courses on there that I am really excited to check out and I will be checking out while I have time off work. There's unlimited access to all online courses, over 100 hours of video and audio content, tips from world-renowned educators, new content every week, and there's high quality streaming available on all devices. I know that there's a Dirty Talk course which I'm keen to try out to help me with dirty talking at work. I'm really excited to do the erotic massage course as well. And I know for people who aren't strippers and are keen and are interested in learning more about striptease and lap dance, there are lap dance and striptease courses. And I just want to talk about my favorite course that I've done so far on Beducated, which is menstrual cycle wellness. Personally, I feel as though the things that I've learnt in this course in particular are going to help me manage my body and its cycles when I'm working in the strip club and also outside of the strip club as well. I've also understood my energy levels at different points in my cycle and how to best manage them, when to be more creative and when to hold back a little, when to allow myself to rest. That's going to have an immeasurable positive impact on my life and I'm so excited to learn more because I don't have Netflix, I don't really watch Netflix but I love learning so having a sexual wellness version of Netflix is I I am amazed and I'm super honored to let you know that you can try all Beducated courses for one day for free and get 70% off the yearly pass with my coupon code Zephyr. I'll put that in the description box below. You can level up your love life and join Beducated for just $7.99 a month. If you sign up for Beducated now you receive access to a huge library of courses this discount will be locked in for life. It's not only for the first year, but it's forever. So check my link for the description of the video and get it now. So other than spending my time learning, I have also been decluttering, which is one of my favorite things to do. I have decluttered so many different times, mostly because I move around a lot, but also because I like to keep like clearing out things and assessing whether things fit within my lifestyle or if it's time to get rid of get rid of things. One thing that I noticed was I was looking at I was looking at this bodysuit that I I used to wear back in the day and I was thinking I would never wear this now. Not because like I don't like it but because it's so like it's so big like not big size wise but it just it covers a lot and I was thinking like a few years ago this was fine like there were plenty of people who would wear something that had this amount of coverage on it and it really got me thinking about how stripper styles have changed over the years and even though like I've only been in the industry since 2015 I've seen like quite a few trends when it comes to stripper style come and go and I was thinking like maybe I could 
film a video talking about how like stripper style has kind of progressed over the years and changed with the times and I started to do some research in regards to this but I wasn't entirely sure if that would be um, something that you'd be interested in obviously I don't it's a lot to look into especially since there's not a whole lot of stripper stuff available on the internet so let me know if you would like a video related to that because that's definitely something that I can dive into but I was just like blown away looking at this bodysuit being like this is not something that would this would be way too modest to wear now and the, I only wore this a few years ago I actually wore this I'm gonna do like a humble brag now I actually met Paris Hilton wearing this believe it or not and like this ruche bottom as well all the bodysuits these days um, are all like g-string bottoms like there's an like this covers like way too much of your bum also I found out that apparently the side part is not cool so I tried going with the middle part I don't know like I'm I'm 27 I don't feel that old but I, apparently I am not up with what's what's trendy what's stylish these days and I don't really care but I was also kind of like my salon is the normal salon that I go to for a blow dry is closed over this period so I went to a different hairdresser and in my head I was thinking like maybe I'll ask her to like do a middle part just to like see what it looks like and try it out she didn't even ask me where I wanted to part my hair she just parted it in the middle automatically and I was like okay like that's it I guess like I'm trying it out I don't really it, it's not my jam I th it's not my thing I think I'm going to go back to the the side part I don't I don't give a f if it's not trendy it's just how I prefer my hair I feel I like a little this I just feel like this doesn't suit me yeah so I'm gonna go through some of my stripper wardrobe obviously I've gotten rid of, rid of a lot of things over the years I now only have like a few bits and pieces staple items so the first thing I ever wore as a stripper I don't have any more I, I don't know why I don't have it, but my lovely editor Jenna will put up a picture here. It was like a mesh, rainbow mesh bikini kind of top. The first club that I ever worked at was a bikini only club. You could only wear bikinis. And then um, eventually the club opened up on Sunday nights and we were able to wear lingerie on Sunday nights. But that was only a few months into me working that that happened. So I wore like this mesh bikini top it wasn't really like a proper bikini but it had a bikini shape and it had like the matching briefs as well the top fit me but the briefs did not but I did not have enough money to go to like it was just like a box set I, I wouldn't call it lingerie it was like um a dance wear at an adult store and I like I said I did not have the money to go splurging on a, like a grand amazing outfit for my first night it was pretty much like Got the got shoes, got the got a cheap outfit, and I wore that to work. And the bottoms did hardly fit me, so I didn't wear them. I didn't wear that outfit that often for obvious reasons. But the one bikini that I wore the most at this venue, I still have, and I have very like I I just cannot I cannot throw this out. And like, look how big the cup size is. I cannot think of any like stripper clothing business that would make cup sizes like this big like this is a normal bikini cup size this is not a stripper bikini the, these are the bottoms pretty much stripper bikinis these days are just g-strings or um, if there's a ruched back it's like a fifth like a fifth of the size of this this would be like nana knickers in the strip club these days even though I don't wear it I still I have it because it makes me think back to the first strip club I ever worked at I just have very appreciative um, memories tied to this bikini and I think I bought this as a, in an adult store as well. Speaking of like box lingerie, it used to be a staple in strip club but I can't think of the last person I saw wearing like a box lingerie set or like bodysuit or anything. I, I suppose like it also depends on like what clubs I've been working at recently but it used to be a thing where like on the way to work we'd just like grab something from the adult store like it that was in a box and then we'd just wear it at work but I have I never see box lingerie sets anymore 
doesn't happen. I remember around the time that I first started, like Honey Burdette was, people thought Honey Burdette was so expensive and, and a lot of strippers that I knew wouldn't get Honey Burdette because it was a, like a lot of money. And now Honey Burdette is even more expensive than it used to be, but so many more strippers are wearing it. And I feel as though people in general are spending more money on their outfits in the strip club than they used to. I definitely think like with the glamorization of stripping we're kind of expected to to look more expensive in a way. This is something that I also hardly ever wear. I bought this at Trashy Lingerie in Los Angeles. I only wore it for a week and um, I have not worn it since. It's got like the classic like 90s g-string <laughs> high-waisted vibes. Actually I think I wore it um once on a 90s like an 80s 90s night in Perth or I wore it for a super set for that but I hardly ever wear it but it ha does have um, fond memories for me and if you look closely it's like snakeskin kind of like metallic sort of material and it's like it's like where are you, where else are you gonna find someone something like this? I can't wait to go back to the states and go to trashy lingerie again. Um, hey, I'm just recording. Okay, thank you. Boy. Gowns used to be a lot more common, as well. The stripper gown. They're slowly. I feel like they're slowly being phased out. I remember I had to wear gowns slash like a skirt and um, bikini top set when I was working in Melbourne. I don't know if that club in Melbourne still does that, but you pretty much wore a gown slash a long skirt set until midnight and then after that you could change, but I, every girl pretty much stayed in the gown all night. There was a club that I worked at in Perth that implemented it briefly on like random Fridays it didn't really make any sense it didn't really suit the club either because it was more of a um it was a kind of a, like a pubby style club it wasn't really an upmarket club so when they introduced it I was like what are you doing but whatever and I remember when I worked in Canberra I was told that there was a dress code um that involved gowns so I went out and bought a it was a beautiful blue sparkly gown that was like real mermaid vibes and when I got to the club literally no one was wearing a gown so I was like why the f did I go buy this if not like if it's not really being implemented and I obviously never wore the gown um, I think I wore it a few times in Perth but um, it was like this color I still have the matching g-string I gave the gown away to a co-worker who was gonna go work in Gladstone so I now have like kind of useless g-string I actually like wear this sometimes when it's laundry day because it's pretty comfy I would be very surprised to see a bikini with this much coverage in a strip club today. This was from the long skirt set that I wore when I was in Melbourne. So I had like this bikini top, um, this g-string, and I don't have the skirt anymore. I gave it away, but it was the same from the same place in Melbourne, Siren Doll, and it was this like a Roman style skirt that goes down like that. That's that. Also, this I've always had a problem with this bikini. It always just like comes undone. It'd be so like embarrassing if you're on stage and it's just like. <laughs> and I also ordered like a black one to wear with obviously like black sets in Gladstone as well. This you've seen me wear it before. Oh my god. Okay. I need to get the scissors for old maid over here. I bought this like really like for like five bucks or something from Playful Promises when um, I was missing I think I was missing a garter belt from a Dita Von T set and I ordered it online and I saw this in the style section I actually bought it intending to wear it as like a top like going out and then used it for work I think I wore it in I wore it in Gladstone and I wore it in Mackay as well I believe yeah super super cute I love the like flower Daisy kind of detail on it but I need to put that somewhere where I won't forget to give it the give that string the snip later on a lovely girl at my club in Perth organized for everyone to get Easter 
Easter ears. <laughs> Funny ears with their names on them for Easter last year. I don't know why, like, I have used it, but I just like keep it in its packaging so that the white doesn't get dirty. But super, super cute. I, oh, I, I went, yeah, I still have it. I also like bought a, like a bunny tail to clip onto my lingerie when I was working um, Easter in Melbourne. We have my Santa skirt, my ginger Santa hat. I cannot count how many skirts I've owned, like plaid skirts that I've owned since I've become a stripper. That it's just, it's just a staple. We all like, we all have one. I remember the first one I owned was like a hustler pink one. It was really cute. But I think something happened to the Velcro, so I got rid of it. And then I've had a few different ones. This is one that I think I just ordered from Love Honey, maybe about a year and a half ago. And it came with the collar, which is super cute. And I also bought like some white like, socks to wear with it as well. Oh, I do I have... Surely I have it. Mm -mm. There is a um, club regular in Perth who is an engraver and he made um, badges everyone on like a schoolgirl themed night he also made me he was making like boxes that suited everyone's personality at work and this is the box that I ended up with are you ready I honestly I don't know I, I don't feel like I have Queen Bee energy I just, I was, when he gave it to me, I was like, I'm, I'm confused. Like, I don't think, like, I, I, I don't know if this is really that suited to me, but whatever, go off. I still, I still appreciate it. Like, it's very, like, a very thoughtful thing to do for everyone. I bought this from a thrift store in Melbourne in um, 2016. I actually used to wear it, like, um, on a night out or something like that because it's, like, cute like cowgirl kind of themed I suppose you can style it in a few different ways but um, at the moment I'm on the hunt for a pair of like slutty denim shorts because I want to do um, do up a cowgirl style stoke I want to do up a cowgirl style show for my club in Perth speaking of outfits for shows this, I, I have to keep this in its separate bag, otherwise it literally goes everywhere. It is the feather boa for my Jessica Rabbit show. Purple feathers hanging around everywhere. Like, I've got some on my bed now. They just, they end up everywhere. And, and, and anyone who has worked with me in Perth on a night that I have done my show, it, it ends up all over the change room floor. It's not often that I keep an outfit that I don't wear. I'll give it away to someone or I'll donate it or I'll sell it. But um, I still have this um, black set. Where's the bra? There it is. I bought it um, at Anne Summers in the UK. The bra does it, it isn't actually part of the original set. It's a different bra, but I liked it because it had like, it just looked really good. And I wore these two with um, the Santa skirt. For stripper vlog 22 I'll try this set on sometimes and I'll be like I'm I'll, like I'll wear this at work and then I don't so I don't know what I'm gonna do maybe that's <laughs> I've read something I th maybe that's a resolution for New Year's wear this set at least once I also have an agent set that I have not worn yet I've had this for about a year which is bad and I can't just like it's still got the tags attached and I think I tried it on when um, when I bought it and I wasn't like it didn't really suit my style and um, I think I've like been holding on to it like thinking that I will change my mind and like I will want it and I've tried to sell it a few times it just hasn't really worked out and I think like I'm just I'm, I don't know why why I still have it so I have no idea what I'm doing with this if you want to buy it let me know this is a really cute g-string as well that I wear with, with my Jessica Rabbit show. It was like a microkini set. And this was like kind of before microkinis were as common as they are now. Um, the top broke. I gave it away to someone at my club who was good with like sewing and like baking things. And I was like, you know what, like 
if, if you like do you want to just like fix it and then keep it for yourself because micro kinis were not not a thing and I didn't really wear it like there were people who wore micro kinis then but just they, they weren't as common as they are now before I show you my like little lingerie area I'm gonna go on to shoes now I only really have the shoes that you've seen I've got like the rose gold the like clear sparkly pleasers, the um, red bottom pleasers that um, I had actually given away when I left Perth and then shout out to Bridget, she kindly gave them back to me when I, when I returned to Perth and I'm now able to wear them again. And I also have the silver pair that you saw in like my cans vlog that I was wearing there. They did not last very long. I don't know if it was the humidity or if pleasers aren't I don't think pleasers are as good quality as they used to be, but now, like, I have had a lot of other stripper heels over the years, obviously, I've, like, either thrown them out or given them away. These are just the ones that I have now, and I'm going to show you my first ever pair of stripper heels. <laughs> Look, like, I was definitely broke when I entered the industry because, like, the, I wore these for way, way too long. Like... What the f is this? Sh All the like diamantes, like a heap of diamantes are mi missing. There's like scratches. These are not like these are not good to these are not good to look at. Yeah, there is no way that I would let a pair of shoes get into this state now. But obviously, when I started, I wasn't as financially um, comfortable as I am now. So I wore these for a lot longer than I needed to. I completely forgot that this was a thing. So, you can kind of see there that, that there was, at one point, a heart engraved into the pleaser. And I remember when I bought these shoes, the person at the adult store told me, like, when you buy pleasers, you, like, engrave a little, like, symbol or you engrave your initial into the shoe so that you know that it's yours if someone tries to steal it. And I feel like that was, that was like, a kind of tradition or, like, tactic that has been lost. I definitely have not seen or heard of anyone doing that in a long time. The, like, the paint peeling too. Also, when I started stripping, there were only, like, a few people at my club who had the 8-inch heels that I wear now. This and, like, the 6 inches, they were the more common stripper heels. Oh my god, there's, like, a little... I don't want to take it out. There's, like, a strand of, like, fire engine red hair in here, which is what my hair used to be. That's so... such a relic. 6-inch heels, they used to be a lot more like they, they were more of a staple in the industry and you never see anyone these days wearing six inch heels so it's really interesting to think about how the shoes have changed as well and everything's a lot more exaggerated slash outrageous in the strip club i find and i think that's also like the from like the glamorization of the adult entertainment industry and i feel like it's a lot more showy if that makes sense also like Keep in mind that all of my experiences are like in regards to the Australian strip club industry. This is like my perspective of how things have changed like as a white woman working in Australia. So obviously different parts of the world, different clubs and different venues all over the place, they're going to have different experiences. But this is just what I'm talking about in my club. And actually as well, now that I think about it, the club that um, I work at in Toowoomba, when I did work there a few years beforehand, we actually weren't allowed to wear G-strings. We had to, I remember I was wearing like a T-bar G-string in a, like with a, in a lingerie set and I was told to change into like brief bottoms because the G-string did not cover enough of my bottom. And obviously that's not the case anymore, which is really interesting to think about. I might ask next time I'm in when that rule changed if anyone has any, any uh, if anyone has any information on that because yeah I remember we had to cover a lot more like there were more rules as to what we could like had to cover in the club and now these days it's a bit more of a free-for-all I also have I have never worn these at work I kind of just have them as like a decoration around the house because I think they're really cute they're like they're like Las Vegas pleasers they've got like dice in them I love them because I'm like manifesting going to Vegas again so and I have like this like kind of like vision of me like walking through a Vegas casino wearing these in like a slinky black dress or something. I never wear these at work, I keep, just keep them as decoration in a way. To be honest the main reason why I bought them is because I was scrolling through Depop 
one day in the middle of 2020 because sometimes I'll just type like stripper or like stripper outfit or like something in like in there if I'm like looking for something in particular. I just ethically find it a lot better to purchase things on Depop rather than like go out and buy something brand new. And um, I saw these, it was like an aesthetic like vintage shop. It was not like for like strippers or sex workers but it was kind of like they were trying to sell them as like a cool thing to wear on a night out and I was like uh-uh I'm not having anyone appropriate my industry just to like look cool. I know that gatekeeping a pair of shoes is a whole other can of worms. But I am going to show you my little lingerie rack like thing, <laughs> I guess. Give me that light. Okay, so this is my rack thing. My, <laughs> my rack thing loves it. This is a successful lingerie thrift piece. I pretty much just wear it for myself. Like, I, I, it feels cool wearing it, so I don't wear it in the strip club, but um, I still have it. My Jessica Rabbit dress, and then I have my lingerie audit, like organized in regards to chakras. So obviously this is root chakra. So I have that burgundy um, agent set. Another red slash nude agent set. Um, a red, I think it's called Roses Dita Von Tees set. I used to have, I used to have a big thing for wearing red at work, obviously. This is another um, Dita Von Tees set. I actually got the bra and the G-string off Catch for like 30, 40 bucks or something ridiculous. And then I ordered um, the Garda elsewhere. So I got this really, really inexpensive. I'm actually missing solar plexus chakra. I can't find anything yellow that I like, but I want to have something for every chakra. But um, this is my sacral chakra set. I only, I don't buy bunny, I, bunny. I don't buy honey burdette myself. I only wear it if, like, if someone buys it for me. Um, I had a lovely customer in Cairns purchase this set for me. So this is my sacral chakra set. This is a green Dita Von T set. I have not, I think I got this really cheap off catch as well. And I haven't been able to find the garter, but I sometime like, and obviously I don't really get a chance to wear it up that often because the garter is missing. But sometimes like I'll feel like just wearing a bra and G string. So I'll wear this, but I love the color. I hope that one day I can ma manage to find the garter on Depop or something. I have actually ordered the same set in blue, the full set in blue. And that is coming very soon so that I have something for the throat chakra. And this is obviously green for the heart chakra. This is third eye chakra. This is a Dita Von Tees set. Um, when I was in Perth last, my manager went through the lost property and there was a Dita Von Tees bra and garter in my size. So I ended up with it. I have ordered the matching G-string online and that's coming soon with my blue set. Another Dita Von T set for Crown Chakra. Another Crown Chakra outfit. Um, this was also bought by that wonderful customer in Cairns, and this is such a this is such a cute set. Honey butter. <laughs> in case in case you didn't already know, this is a um, bras and things G string and bra that I sometimes wear. The garter just didn't really suit my body type. I didn't like how it looked on me so I just bought the bra and g-string but um and I sometimes wear like a random black garter with it and I sometimes just wear it like by itself so I have the Madame X black Dita Von Tee set I did have the garter belt but um I think like there was something up with the the ribbons in it and I just got sick of it and I threw it out so I only have <laughs> the bra and the g-string at the moment black agent set love it Shia Nori, and I have a white agent set that I love, but I hardly ever wear it because I'm like so scared of spilling something on it or like getting my period when I'm wearing it. So I intend to wear this a lot more during the new year. And then I, I have my bikinis here. So my lavender bikini, my blue bikini, my green sequin bikini, my gold bikini, this, which like back in the day, I mean, it's it's like a G-string. So back in the day, this would have been like revealing. But today, 
this is like a very modest piece of stripper clothing the like money um bodysuit that i have and then my my two slingshots which like i said before would have been outrageous back in the day and then down here i have a bag of like jewelry that i sometimes wear to work i have i don't know that box is just there for decoration because i like the color um, and then I have my free heels and then my work bag. So, so that's, that's my wardrobe, stripper wardrobe. Mm -mm -mm. I just thought I would like share with you what my stripper wardrobe looks like and kind of like talk about how things have kind of changed over the past few years stripper wise. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it interesting. Like I said, if you would like a more in-depth video about like stripper style over the years, I am happy. I'm happy to dive right into that. Or if you want any kind of like analytical videos in general, obviously they take up a lot of time and energy and I only really want to dive into them if I know that you're going to be interested in them. Other than that, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me. It's been an honor once again. I hope you enjoyed a closer look at my wardrobe. If you liked this video, please press like so that I know that you like this kind of content. If you have any of your own personal experiences in regards to how stripper outfits have changed over the years, I would love to see you comment below, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when more videos come out. I just want to say I appreciate you a whole lot, and I hope you have a magical day. I'll see you next time.